Hello my soccer universe, final one for the weekend and I hope this goes out just before the Champions League kicks off, doing this in lunchtime before I'm taking a well-deserved break for the day. Boy, uh, is it good to have the Bernabeu back? I'm wearing a Real Madrid. I was getting really, really sick of all the papers. So uh, for me, this is almost the biggest thing. The Bernabeu is back. Didn't look quite like the Bernabeu because there were many tarps there, but the Bernabeu, we have the Bernabeu back. So very, very, very happy about that, to be honest. We also had the luck of the champions from Atletico Madrid uh, winning deep into stoppage time. We have Valencia on the rise and we had in Portugal a pretty big match um, between Sporting and Porto, which one team definitely dropped points there. Oh well, um, so before, as I did every week, I want to briefly comment and maybe I will comment a little bit more because hey, we didn't get a Barcelona game this week. And may I just, uh, before we go, uh, nah, here are the results. Uh, before we go into it uh, a little bit deeper, what a ridiculous ruling that Villarreal, Sevilla and Barcelona's uh, games, as, as I think it was down to Villarreal and Sevilla, those games have been postponed because the Spanish Federation saw that the South American players for these teams are not available. I mean, everywhere else it works and now we just postponed those games, especially Sevilla Barcelona, which would have been a big clash. Maybe because Sevilla has many South American players, you want to keep it fair or whatever, but when do you want to play this? When do you want to play this? Honestly, and I find it absolutely ridiculous. I mean, then don't schedule such a big game right after an international break. I find this rather, rather ridiculous. And early on, we have a rather uneven standings uh, already. Well, speaking of Barcelona, as I said, uh, for me, when we talk about the transfer window in Spain, it is a Barcelona losing more or less all the big stars and the whole disaster around it. And Real Madrid's um, attempt of signing a superstar player to have someone ready when uh, the Bernabeu is reopened, which I think also didn't really quite work out all that well. However, I see many people saying that uh, Barcelona are the clear losers of the transfer window, and I tend to not agree with that. Yes, if you lose Messi, that's huge, but I think we. I think, I'm not 100%, but I think everything points to it that I think the club wanted to get rid of Messi. I mean, they were in such a bad shape that um, they just needed to find some excuse kind of to not have him be at the club any, 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 anymore. I really, really have that feeling. It was very convenient for, for them to let it go. Then you got rid of Griezmann in the, on the last second. Charisma was a non-entity and you need to get rid of some salary. Barcelona actually, you know, all the captains uh, let go of quite some salary. Um, I hear, yeah, why do you get rid of Charisma now? Couldn't you have done that sooner that you can save Messi? I think the numbers would not have even worked out then. It was that, that bad for Barcelona. So I think this was ab about to happen. And I think Griezmann was, is only more than happy to go back to Atletico Madrid, where um, he immediately tried to impress his man manager by getting the same haircut um, as Simeone. I liked him better when he was full on with it. But, but yeah, that's neither here or there. Bringing in though um, Depay, and you know then the, uh, and you know a few other players i mean i don't think aguero i think this was a stupid signing but i have to say there were a few signings in there that i actually think that barcelona still has a pretty good team best team in the league no absolutely not i think uh when it comes to squad depth it is definitely atletico madrid who now yes they got griezmann who probably will pay the dividends they also got rodrigo de paul uh, from Serie A, who will be an excellent player, and they already had a pretty deep squad. Uh, first team squad, I think Real Madrid. I mean, if you just take the starting lineup, best possible starting lineup, despite all the uh, people go going out, if you have Bonsema up front, if you have uh, Kroos, Modric, and Casemiro midfield, and you have uh, Courtois on the back, I think you're looking pretty good, uh, Real, Real Madrid. But if one of these are injured, I think then. Real Madrid might get into trouble. They, of course, also add David Alaba 
from uh, you know they signed him on on on, on a free but the um, from Bayern Munich. So uh, that might give them some stability defense because you lost Ramos and you lost Varane. So not only Barcelona are you losing big names, but also um, Real Madrid. Just based on that and uh, looking at the depth of the squads, one is tempted to really say uh, Atletico Madrid should be considered favorites there. Uh, as you know, the ratings don't bear it out quite yet. So, jumping into the game, let's talk uh, Atlet Atletico Madrid, who found themselves down at Espanyol. <laughs> Raul de Tomas getting the first goal for Espanyol in the fourth game of the season. And Espanyol playing quite well. Atleti really not, not, not playing good. But then Kondogbia, Lemar and Lodi come on at, uh, at halftime and the complexity of the game changes a little bit. Um, first a goal by Lemar is disallowed. Then Carrasco scores a really nice equalizer. And then because of all these VARs and some injuries and, and so on, suddenly 10 uh, minutes stoppage time are added, which many Espanyol fans and maybe others uh, are not quite happy with. Um, La Liga actually broke it down that uh, it was still too little because they were actually 12 minutes of stoppage. And Lemar finds the winner. And Atletico Madrid is one of those teams that just love to win ugly. An easy win is not an Atletico win. They love to win ugly and so they get another win. Uh, Espanyol will be ruining that one a little bit. A uh, teeny bit I saw of Osasuna Valencia live but I also saw the highlights and I gotta say uh, Osasuna played well in there. Uh, even took the lead, but Maxi Gomez gets an equalizer in the second half very early on. Uh, Valencia turns the game their way. First a freak on goal by Hernandez who just wants to clear it and then it just uh, takes such a slight deflection it goes in, into net. A really weird one by Gonzalo Gedesh really, really well. And Valencia actually then also starting to play well. And the resurrection of Valencia is something that uh, the league definitely, definitely needs. Um, a goal for... Osasuna was also uh, disallowed because of a foul in Bilbao. It was kind of weird because the goalie had the ball in his hands already. And then um, uh, uh, Bar uh, Barazna, Barazanac takes the ball out of his hands. And yeah, he had the ball hands on. So you can, you can do it and Alderete then adds a fourth for Valencia. Which leads us straight to the Bernabeu. Uh, as I said, it is really great to have the Bernabeu back. As I said, Real Madrid will be... Probably one of the more entertaining teams to watch because up front, if they have the full uh, squad, uh, the full strength, especially with Benzema up, up front and now even Vinicius Jr. scoring goals, they are a fun team to watch. However, they are also leaking on the back, uh, which actually might make the uh, Inter-Real game really, really interesting uh, coming up. You saw the defensive frailties on the first goal by Santimina. Uh, and also when Celta uh, took another uh, lead 2-1, uh, to, to but once in mind, the meanwhile had equalized. They even whistles at the Bernabeu <laughs> at halftime because they found the down, but in Bonsema, Vinicius Juniors and Camavinga coming on and scoring. So that was the one big signing I forgot to say for Real Madrid. I think this is not now a superstar signing, but in the long term, I think this might turn out quite well for Real Madrid. And then uh, Bonsema scores a penalty. It's a, clear 5-2 romping of uh, Celta and then yesterday um, I also saw uh, some highlights of Betis against Gran uh, Granada uh, against Betis where Betis in the first half, weird jersey so, uh, was really really dominant um, only found one goal Granada I think through Luis Suarez not the Lu Luis Suarez but uh, another player of the same name uh, equalizes then Granada very quickly taking the lead but uh, very late on uh, Betis gets the winner and win the derby and get the first win of the season. As I said, uh, two games have been postponed for rather odd reasons, which means at the moment Real Madrid stay top, Valencia and Atletico Madrid also are up there. Uh, so really, really, really interesting. But as you will see in the stats at the end of the video, um, we have to, of course, adjust and then things will look a little, little bit differently. Since Barcelona has a plate, they're still favorites, but it's a very tight race with Atleti and Real Madrid also in contention. Moving over far west um, to Portugal, I think there is also a very interesting Real Madrid um, Valenci at, at Valencia matchup coming up next week. And I think that's another one that we should watch. So 
moving all the way west to Portugal, you see here the results. Uh, I don't have too much uh, to say about Port Port Portugal, although I think Pablo Sarabia joining a Sporting, that's an interesting signing for sure. Uh, Yaremchuk, well, he was bound to go to go, 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 go to a good club, so he's going to Benfica as well. Valentino Lazaro from Austria, uh, from Inter is also going to Benfica, as is João Mario. Um, who else I see? I mean, there are also a lot of uh, Nuno Mendes from Sporting is going to PSG, for instance. A lot of exits. Danilo Pereira from Porto is going to PSG. So PSG uh, shows up pretty much everywhere. And yeah, Musa Marega has left. Oh, I'm sorry to see that. So yeah, uh, having talked, I've talked about that. The one game we need to talk in Portugal is, of course, um, the draw between Sporting and Porto. It was flattering to Porto. They were the only shot on goal they get an e e equal as ever Santos had given Sporting uh, a lead and Sporting having quite a few chances. Maybe not a huge chances, but uh, you know, with some luck you can make it uh, a 2-0 uh, even before the half. And then you're gonna win, win, win the game. So Porto will be very, very happy getting out there. It was also a well, rather rough game. Many, many yellow cards. So it was only a uh, consequence that, that Martinez got uh, sent off. However, he was substituted on and then within two to two minutes gets two yellows. But uh, you cannot make a challenge like that. And so with those points drop and Benfica thumping Santa Clara, the derby of the two same logos, more or less. We have Befica clear up. Sturil is also there, and then Sporting and Porto, who have uh, nearly identical re records, with Porto giving a slightly the edge overall. But that you can all see now in the summary of all the statistics for this round, which I follow up here. <laughs> enjoyed this video please drop a line if you want to add any anything to anything happening in La Liga or Liga Portugal and yeah um, give me a thumbs up enjoyed it subscribe to my channel and see more and I will talk to you soon bye hey there I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye